Coming up in today's video, I'm going to be cleaning my dad's house again. I know a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating me returning and doing another room. And I finally managed to get round to it, so we're doing the living room today. And not only are we going to give it a good old clean and tidy, we're going to decorate for Christmas as well. My dad's lived in this house for just over 20 years and not once has it been decorated for Christmas. So I thought that'd be really nice for him. And I cannot wait to show you the final result. I've been asked a few times as well to show you what the kitchen looks like a few months after I came and cleaned it. So I'm going to give you a glimpse of that as well. Whilst to give you a tour of what we're dealing with today, I just want to give you a reminder that there are a million reasons why someone's house might get messy and judgment is just not welcome on this channel. If you're genuinely not able to understand why someone's house might get on top of them, that's a reason to count yourself lucky. It really is. Anyway, let's get into the video. I came into this clean blind. I did not know what to expect at all because my dad told me that the room wasn't too bad at all. And you know what? Compared to the kitchen, it really wasn't. It was just a bit cluttered really and things just needed a home. So my main goal for today was to find places for things and to minimise what was on show. Keyword here is minimise though because I don't want the room to look like a showroom and I know my dad definitely doesn't. He likes things that have character and that look homely and lived in. So that was the end goal I had in mind. Homely and lived in. So after looking around and assessing how to do things, my first target was this table in the corner. It was just overflowing with stuff and I knew that once I'd cleared it, it would already make a massive difference in the room. It was full of my dad's artwork and photos and sketchbooks from when he was at uni. And I think you'll enjoy this. This is a lenticular print, hand drawn by my dad. And it's basically where you interlace multiple images in a really clever way to give the illusion that the photo's moving. Or in that case, the drawing. Here's my dad at around the age he had me, I believe, so 22. I know so many of you were interested in hearing more about him and his art in the last video. And honestly, that means the world to me. And I will tell you more about him later on in the video. Don't worry, this video is still a cleaning video. I just got sidetracked with all the stuff on the desk. So just bear with me for a minute while I get this out of my system and then things start to get done a lot quicker. I just love looking at old drawings and old photos, especially from a time before there was even such a thing as a phone camera. The photos where you had no idea what they were going to turn out like. And it's just life, candid. There's me. Here's my mum on a wired house phone. They don't exist anymore. My mum and me in my grandma's house there. Look at the decorations. And isn't my mum adorable? I started off by just plonking everything onto the settee so that I could clean the table. And then after that, I worked on finding places for everything. Here's some more of my dad's sketches. For those of you who haven't watched the first part to this clean... I talk a lot there about my family and about how art kind of runs in our veins. My dad was the first in his family to go to university and he's the reason that I then went on to also study art and I think ultimately the reason I'm talking to you right now when you're watching this video. My dad is a huge influence of mine, as you can probably tell. And the things he introduced me to growing up, the books, the music, the comedy and most especially the mindset definitely led to what I do today and I'm going to talk more about that in a while but I just wanted to show you these battery powered candles they have a flicker setting which makes them look really realistic and I know I'm only a fraction of the way into the clean but I thought it would be a good idea to put some of the decorations out as I went along because I think that's a really clever way of keeping yourself motivated and keeping yourself on track it gave me a little glimpse into the room's potential and that spurred me on to reach it I would have liked to have kept this table clear because I thought it looked really lovely like that. But there was just so much stuff and my dad doesn't have that much storage space so I did have to put some of it back. In a more orderly fashion, of course. And by the way, before anybody panics about what was in my hand just then, it was cloth filled with wax. It's from some sculptures my dad's working on at the minute. Anyway, as I clear this desk, let me get back to what I was talking about. When I make these videos, I try to compound all that I've learned, not just from my dad, but just in general, and integrate it into the voiceovers in the hopes that I can positively impact as many people as possible. And there was one thing from my past that stands out especially when I think about what motivates me to structure what I talk about in these videos in the way that I do. 
and it was my dad's magic ability to soothe and calm heightened emotions in others. I used to think it was a magical ability anyway, but it turns out it was actually very intentional. I remember when I was a teen, I used to think everything was the end of the world, as I'm sure most of us did. But I'd get myself extremely worked up and I really struggled with regulating my emotions. And each time I'd get into a state to the point that there was no reasoning with me. And my mum would end up calling my dad and he'd drive down after work. My mum and dad weren't together, you see. Hadn't been for a long time. But I'd trot over to the car window in hysterics, trying to rant about all the things that made me depressed and why I couldn't do this anymore. Please note that I was a hormonal teenager going through some very intense feelings and I thought I had depression. But hormones are powerful things and I don't think we give them enough credit in their ability to shape how we perceive the world. So I look back on it lightly, but it felt terrible at the time. And this might be controversial, but instead of indulging me and allowing me to continue talking about it, I mean, he did allow me to talk about it. I kept talking, but he didn't say a word. Anyway, he'd sit me in the back of the car and drive for a little bit around country roads in silence. I'd usually stop talking at this point because I realised he wasn't going to match my energy and agree that, yes, Remy, your life is awful. Not that I wanted that, but I wanted my pain to be acknowledged and spoken about. And then it'd start to get dark. I used to wind the window down and let the air in. And the smell of the twilight, you know when the ground starts to get damp and it's just that smell. And depending on where you are, you can smell people cooking their dinner. You can see the lights in their houses. I sometimes used to stick my head out of the window and look up at the sky and you could see the stars so clearly. And I could feel myself getting peaceful each time. But I'd always still be thinking, when are we going to start talking about my problems? And then he'd start talking about something completely off topic. He'd tell me a random fact about a person in history. Or a story about his childhood friend who used to cut holes in the lining of his coat and steal hamsters from the local pet shop. He'd talk about meditation and neuro-linguistic programming and the law of attraction. My granddad's adventures butterfly hunting. The time he got left with a bike that didn't have brakes. Funny things, interesting things, anything other than what I thought was the end of the world. And on those car trips, the weight on my chest would slowly dissolve until I forgot about why I felt so bad. And I'll get back to the point I'm trying to make there in just a few minutes. But let's get back to what we're doing here. When I told my dad I was going to come over and do the living room, he bought a rug online because he's wanted the living room to have carpet for so long. But he hasn't really had the funds, so he was just like, I'll buy a really large rug for the time being. I did the same in my own living room. I'd love a carpet, but I can't really afford one right now. And with little kids, there's so many spillages. But yeah, the size of this rug, though, he must have measured it to within a fraction of a centimetre. I'm not going to lie, I was vexed because I didn't know how to move everything around to make it fit. And to be quite honest, I thought it was going to look ridiculous. I got my brother to come and help me with the lifting. And you can probably tell from my face in these clips, I was far from impressed. I probably would have been more relaxed about it if I didn't have such a limited time frame to get everything done. But yeah, in spite of my little tantrum, it did end up looking pretty good in the end. Anyway, back to what I was saying earlier. I'm not and never would suggest that we shouldn't acknowledge or work through the things that cause us distress. That's so important too, and there's a time and a place for that. And in fact, I discuss a lot of my issues and things that might cause other people issues in these videos. I think it's healthy to talk it out and express our feelings and experiences. But I also think there's a time and a place for taking some of the power away from those feelings, especially when they're so intense and all-consuming. And remembering that the world is genuinely such a cool and interesting place. And that actually, it's worth being here and sticking around. I think if you've got the capacity to be distracted and to laugh, then you're most definitely not doomed to feel this rubbish forever. And I always think back to those drives whenever I'm making one of these videos. It's why I like to go off on tangents and tell stories. Because there might just be a listener who happens upon one of my videos who's feeling so overwhelmed or down, and a good old distraction chat is just what they needed. Because the thing is, everything's temporary, even if it feels like you'll never feel okay again. The only way you'd possibly feel horrible for the rest of your life 
is if you blocked out every other potential thought path and intentionally held on to the one you're in and kept choosing it again and again. Distractions help with breaking that habit and it is a habit. A habit is something we do repetitively, whether we're conscious about it or not. But distractions create cracks for other feelings to seep in. I want to reiterate what I mean by distraction here because I don't want my words to be misconstrued. There are healthy and unhealthy distractions. Unhealthy distractions are things that mask our pain and make us forget. I think we all know what these are and I don't really need to say it. But healthy distractions remind us, even if it's only for a few seconds, that there's hope and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Such as comedy, music, dancing, reminiscing with a friend, getting closer to nature, smelling the air and the earth, and looking at the stars and remembering just how small and insignificant we are. That helps too. I know that sounds so strange, but it really does. I think there's something about stripping everything back to basics and just being outside in the elements. Feeling the air or the sun or the rain on your skin. Sometimes in the morning when I'm groggy and I really don't see the point in doing the same thing day in, day out. The same routines, cleaning, working, just everything on repeat. I open my front door and I step outside and the cold air, the slight discomfort of it, jolts what I think must be a primal memory and a sense of serenity in me that I can't really put into words. And it says, right now, in this moment, all is well. And I think that's why my dad used to take me on those drives in the countryside. You might not think talking about something completely off topic would inadvertently help you process and work through your pain. And yet it can. And I think that's magic. I spoke to him about it all years later. Because I always wondered at the time how those trips managed to calm me and make me feel that all was well with the world, even though we hadn't spoken about my problems once. And I found out the way he handled those situations was intentional and there was a method behind it. And I just hope I can handle those moments as well as he did when my boys get older. I do worry about it because I know how I felt in those moments and how irrational and impulsive I was. And how my mum's emotions and panic, as much as I love her, got piled on top of mine and oftentimes exacerbated it all. It's all so tricky, isn't it, being human? At any age, we're all just muddling through. But in these videos, I'll always share what I learn along the way to help people as much as I can. When people say, why do you chat so much? Well, it's because chatting about anything and everything, adding silly anecdotes and things that don't seem at all relevant, can do so much more for someone than you realise. And the man that lives in this house is the reason that I know that. And so I just wanted to share that all with you today. Anyway, enough of that rambling. Let's get back to talking about what we're doing here. So, as I was chatting away, I managed to get all of the surfaces cleared and cleaned. Finally managed to position the rug correctly. To do that, I had to empty the bookshelf just to be able to lift it. Which is probably a good thing because it really needed a dust. And as you can see, the rug ended up looking quite good and it added a cosiness to the room. It started to transform into the kind of room you'd like to snuggle up on the sofa in and take a nap after a long day at work. Even the colour combination of red and blue, which never made sense to me, started to make sense. And this laid some great foundations for me to start the decorating. I always had a vision in my mind's eye of what I wanted to do with the room in terms of the Christmas decorating. And the fireplace was always the main feature. I love a living room with a fireplace. I think it's just, it adds so much character. I'd been to the garden centre a month back looking for ideas and I'd seen this fireplace display and it had a garland with warm white lights and it had these red lights with little berries on intertwined. Red lights have always seemed a bit sinister for Christmas in my opinion, but it really worked in this display and I thought, do you know what? This is really going to work in my dad's room. So I chose to do a red and gold theme throughout and I've said this before, but I am so excited to show you how it all turned out. I mean, just look how cosy it looks, even now. I don't know what I was expecting, but I definitely wasn't expecting it all to come together as well as it did. You might completely disagree when you see it all, but I was definitely so chuffed with it. My dad was upstairs asleep because he was on nights whilst I did this clean. I don't know if you remember, but in the last video he was on earlies. So last time he came home from work to a nice kitchen to cook his dinner in. And this time he was going to wake up before work to a transformed living room. So the pressure was really on 
and I was trying to get it done to the highest standard possible in the quickest amount of time. I know earlier I said I'd cleared all the stuff on the surfaces. Totally forgot I didn't clear the settee. But yeah, I'd bought some throws from B&M, red and gold themed still, because my dad's had these old blankets in the living room, probably since we were children. And I thought it'd be nice to add some new soft blankets to snuggle up in. His house can get really cold in the winter time. So I bought three, one for him, one for my brother who lives here too, and one for Smithers, the basset hound. I wanted to lay one of them out on the settee, but couldn't figure out a good way to do it. Nothing was looking good. So you see me having a bit of a debate with myself here. But we figured something out in the end. It still doesn't look the way I wanted it to, but that's what we're working with now. It'll do. Anyway, next it was time to build the tree. This tree used to be my auntie's. She's had it stored in a loft for years, so she very kindly offered to let me use it here. And I was so grateful because Christmas trees, good quality ones, well, not even good quality ones anymore, all Christmas trees seem to cost a fortune. So that really saved me a lot of money, and it's such a lovely tree as well. I remember the first Christmas tree I bought when I moved out. Rudy and I had been living with my mum and stepdad until he was around two, and I'd just become a single mum. I'd been going through it emotionally, and I felt very down about myself and where I was in life. I felt I was letting my son down. Originally, me and my ex were living with my parents while we tried to save up a bit for a mortgage, but that didn't work out. And it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because I kind of blossomed as a person after that. And when me and Rudy found a little place of our own, the house you always see in the videos, I didn't have that much money at all, as you can imagine, and I bought the cheapest Christmas tree I could find. Got it out to decorate, didn't have a base. I'd also bought a multi-pack of baubles, like the ones you see here, thinking that they'd already come with strings. Quickly realised they didn't and ended up having to use dental floss. And after I'd threaded each bauble with dental floss, I found the strings in the pack at the bottom. And I'd like to say that's the only time that's happened to me, but here I am again using dental floss to put strings on these baubles. I was arrogant this time because I thought the strings are going to be at the bottom, it's going to be fine. Nope! Had to scour the house looking for something and the only thing I could find, again, was dental floss. You've got to be resourceful, haven't you? But yeah, our first Christmas tree was missing a base. It was meant to come with one, by the way. I wasn't just being silly. And then we tried to fluff out the branches and the tree was still basically see-through. I remember laughing so much and us stood there trying to decorate it with those dental floss baubles. It's just such a precious memory. Because it was just me and Rudy against the world. Our first Christmas in our first home. And for the first time in my life, I felt like an actual adult. And that I was going to be alright. And that I was a good mum, and I was the right mum for my son. I know that probably sounds silly, but yeah. Anyway, here was the Christmas tree with all the baubles on. I loved the way it turned out. So simple, but so pretty. And then it was time to pull everything together. Switch all of the lights on, decide where to put the other two blankets. I had planned to take those two kitchen chairs out of the room. But I know my dad likes to use one of them as a table to eat his dinner on. So I took one out and I popped a folded blanket on top of the other one. And I think it's a really nice touch actually. Let me know what you think when you see it. The other blanket I put on top of this old white cupboard thing. I don't know whether you've seen it throughout the video. I have no idea why it was in there or what it was actually for. But I didn't want to take it out of the room if my dad had a plan for it. So yeah, I popped another one on top of that to make it look more in keeping. And here's the finished room. Yeah, there might be some wires sticking out and bits and bobs here and there. But when you think back to what the room looked like when I arrived, it's just night and day. It feels like home now and I just love it so much. And I was just so pleased to know that my dad was going to wake up, probably dreading a night shift, and come downstairs and see this. And know that this is what he was going to come home to after he finished. Knowing you're going to come home to something cosy and comforting can really help you get through the day, can't it? And yeah, I popped a box of Quality Street out, put a crackling fire on the telly and put some orange and cinnamon potpourri in the fireplace to make the whole room smell Christmassy. And now, the moment I think a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to take you back to the kitchen and we'll have a look at how it's faring. For those of you who haven't watched the first video, in October I came and did a huge deep clean which took me all day and a lot of you have been wondering what the kitchen looks like now. So here it is. 
Is it messy? Yeah, but I wasn't expecting any less. But it's nowhere near as cluttered as it was the last time. Do you know what is more cluttered though? The kitchen table. And that's because my dad's got an obsession with decorating now. He's been focusing on touching up the paintwork and putting in new doors. Really pretty doors, by the way. I'll have to show you one day. But yeah, not too bad. Nothing a good 30 minutes bee clean can't fix, eh? You didn't think I was leaving without sorting the kitchen, did you? Come on now. Let's clean up. I absolutely love cleaning for others. I find it so fulfilling. And it's so much easier to clean than my own mess. I can be a perfectionist at times, especially when it's for other people. I want to do the best job I possibly can. I had a lot of comments on the first video asking why I don't go and clean for my dad more often. And honestly, I wish I could. But those of you who know me well now know that I'm also a very messy person myself. And I have to work very hard to stop my own house from becoming chaotic. I have to be so disciplined and stick to rigid routine or it quickly becomes out of hand. Not only that, but I'm a mum. I have two small children. One of them who's a toddler who's still potty training and learning to talk and learning all about life. I need to be there for him as much as I can in those integral early years. I also have a job outside of the home, as well as filming and editing for TikTok and YouTube. On top of that, I also have a beautiful relationship that I want to water and nourish in the little free time we have. There was a time I wished so hard for someone like the man I have today. I remember once when I was a teen, I'd had my heart broken and I wrote a list of all of the qualities that I wanted in a partner. And I took the paper outside in my mum's garden and I buried it in the ground to seed. And that man is everything that I wished for. So it's so important to me to carve out quality time amongst the busy schedule. I don't want to take any of it for granted. So as much as I would love to fit in more time to help people, there are only so many hours that I can set aside each month. Trust me when I say I want to do more and I want to be there more. I wish there were a thousand versions of me who could go out and do all the things I want to do all at once. And maybe there'll come a time where I can be more available. But this season of my life is full on. So I clean for others when I can. And I'm not going to stop doing that. Acts of service is one of my love languages. And you can expect a lot more of these kind of videos over the coming months and years. I have loads more exciting stuff planned for the new year too. As I said in my last video, we're doing declutter January. Because there's a huge Monica Geller-esque cupboard in my bedroom that's the stuff of nightmares, honestly. So I'll be decluttering and reorganising that. All of the kitchen cupboards too, they're just in disarray. And I hope to finally get round to finishing the garden transformation video that I planned on posting last summer. That got delayed because of the constant rain. But for anyone who doesn't know, we got cursed with leather jacket grubs. They ate our entire lawn. There was nothing but mud left. And I recorded the entire process of finding them, trying to get rid of them, what they look like, the grass growing back. And we started painting the fences and planning what we were going to add to the garden. And yeah, we just didn't manage to finish it all. And I so badly want to give my children a nice garden to play in next summer. With a lovely lawn and a sand pit and some strawberry and raspberry plants. Maybe a canopy with some fairy lights and me and Charlie will be able to sit under it at night after the kids have gone to bed. I'm also wanting to redecorate the kitchen and living room next year and give them a new lease of life. Because the walls are just getting so grubby and mushrooms chewed holes in most of our blankets. And I think a change in colour palette would just be really good. And of course I'm going to be talking and body doubling you all through some more chaotic house cleans and finding new and fun ways to tackle overwhelming messes. Those kind of videos spark joy in my soul. I absolutely love to make them. Because they were the kind of videos that I so desperately needed just five years ago. When I thought there was something wrong with me and that I was the only one who struggled to keep my home tidy. So there's lots of stuff to look forward to and I hope you stick around and that I can continue to put out videos that you enjoy and that bring you some comfort. I can't even put into words what you've given to me and my family just by watching and interacting with these videos. The fact that so many of you come back each and every time, it makes my heart so happy. And it's been an honour to make them. Genuinely, I can't wait to get out of bed and clean every morning. 20 year old me would never have believed that. Oh no, because we were creative and we thrived in the chaos and that was the only way we could make good art. 
But even more so, I'm so passionate about what I speak about in these videos. And the fact that you enjoy them has changed our entire lives. And I just can't thank you enough for tagging along and listening to my rambles. Thank you. So the video's almost done. And obviously I didn't get to do a very thorough job in here. Because at this point I'd been cleaning and sorting for about 9 hours. And I hadn't eaten anything. And I wanted to get back to my kids and Charlie and spend a few hours with them before bed. We wanted to watch the new Chicken Run movie. We've been counting the days until it came out. Because we all love Aardman. Wallace and Gromit, Sean the Sheep. It's just so wholesome. So yeah, it was a real life speed clean. And I'm going to get some meanies telling me I'm a terrible cleaner. But you know what? At least I'm trying and I'm doing something. I have a really thick skin and things don't often get to me. But that isn't the case for everyone, and I think people should remember that. <laughs> I had someone give me a 4 out of 10 the other day on my cleaning. That was an unsolicited score that I didn't ask for. After I spent 8 hours working my bum off trying to make a difference for somebody. It did make me laugh. I think on social media we've all gotten so used to pointing out people's flaws and what they've done wrong that we forget to acknowledge all of the good and be encouraging and kind. Recognising people's efforts and being a cheerleader has always been the way to encourage more of something. Not belittling them and trying to squash their spirit. Looking for the good in what people do always makes people want to be more proficient and try even harder. And I just think that's something we should all remember and try and implement in our day-to-day -day lives, especially if we're a parent. Anyway, just had to clear off Smithers' handprints from all of the cupboards. He's such a funny dog. I did try and film him for you, but he wouldn't stay still. He was just running into the camera stand and knocking it over with his tail. I'll show you him next time. And yeah, once again, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this clean for my dad and to be able to give back to someone who's given me more than he'll ever know. And it's been a pleasure to film it for you. I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. I'll show you the final result of the kitchen in just a minute. And if I don't see you again before Christmas, which I am hoping to, I've got one more video planned. But if I don't see you, I hope you have the best Christmas with your loved ones. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.